Hey T heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, deciphering Da Hong Pao. In this video, I'm going to try to give you as much knowledge as I possibly can about this famous but often faked tea so that you can find the good stuff. This video is going to go under the tea masterclasses and the single tea tastings playlists. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, please give the video the thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more tea videos are going to come your way. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, go click that button. Probably a lot of you, if not most of you, have already heard of Da Hong Pao, aka Big Red Robe, one of the most famous oolong teas in China, um, often given as gift tea. It's one of the famous rock oolongs or yen chas from the Wuyi area in Fujian province in China. And it is everywhere. All tea sellers will sell it. Um, it's often given as gift tea, um, but the problem is that it's so often faked or poor quality. Now, this tea comes, as I said, from Wuyi area, and I love Wuyi mountain area. They produce incredible teas, but trying to get good information from the producers and farmers in Wuyi province is probably the most difficult um, mountainous area to get good information out of. And the reason for that, well, I think there are a couple of reasons. The first is that it is genuinely the one of the classic areas for tea growing. It has hundreds, probably thousands of years of tea growing history. So the knowledge just gets passed on from generation to generation. And so to try and kind of find out the whys and, and, and hows of, of the tea production um, is difficult because often the producers just do what they've been taught to do um, and it produces amazing tea. Um, but they don't really question the reasoning or, or question the processing behind their techniques. But the second reason why it's difficult to get information out of the farmers and producers in Wuyi is because, I'm gonna say it, there is a little bit of a conspiracy going on over there in Wuyi um, where everybody is cashing in on Da Hong Pao. Um, and so if they tell you too much, if you get too much information, then you can start to spot the truth from the fakes and it becomes more difficult for them to sell their tea. So I, I, I say that um, with the utmost respect to these producers, but I really do think that, there's, um, that there needs to be more clarity in Da Hong Pao, which is why I'm doing this video. So let's do a little bit about the background of Da Hong Pao. The legend of Da Hong Pao is um, typically um, lyrical. Um, nine dragons fighting in the sky with an immortal over Wuyi mountains um, and the immortal one and the nine dragons became the nine peaks of Wuyi mountains and the immortal left these mother bushes, these special tea plants um, to remind uh, the people of his victory. Um, the monks tended these mother bushes and then the story has various different strains, but basically um, the most commonly told strain of the story is that a, a scholar who was studying for imperial exams in Beijing fell ill just before his exams and looked out and saw these bushes glinting in the sunlight, these um, with little red tips. Um, the monks gave him some of the tea from these bushes. It uh, magically cured him. Um, he went to Beijing and he, he got top prize in the imperial um, exam. And then the emperor, uh, the emperor's wife fell ill. And so this uh, scholar suggested to the empress that she should drink this tea. She drank it, she became cured. And the um, tribute was brought back to these bushes and either the, the scholar or the emperor decreed that these uh, bushes were to be laid around the bushes were to be laid these big red robes. And so these bushes became known as Da Hong Pao, the big red robe bushes. And these mother bushes still supposedly exist today. They are definitely there. I, so there um, some uh, confusion over the number, but most people say that there are six mother bushes that are there. You can go and visit them if you visit Wuyi province, but you won't be allowed anywhere near them. They're on the cliff and they have a big stone saying Da Hong Pao next to them. And there are some guardians of the Da Hong Pao mother bushes that still tend to these bushes. Now, tea stopped being made from these bushes probably about 10 years ago. But when they were being made, it commanded the highest price. Obviously, these are, these are 
teas that were being um, produced from six, seven, five, six, how, whatever the number. I can't believe they can't count how many bushes there are there um, so that we get a distinct number, but around six bushes. You can imagine how expensive this tea um, was because it was by imperial decree. These were the special big red robe mother bushes. And so at its peak, these um, tea bushes were producing tea that was commanding crazy prices. We're talking about a million dollars per kilo, something of that magnitude. So crazy, crazy prices. Right, so that's the background. Now enter the marketeers. So obviously this tea commanding these high prices, people wanted to taste it and so there was a demand. Now these mother bushes are supposedly the Qi Dan variety. So they were grown from seed, obviously, so they're not gonna be genetically identical, all of these mother bushes. But the common thinking was, and still is, that these mother bushes are the Qi Dan variety. And in the 1980s, they started to take cuttings of the mother bushes to propagate throughout the Wuyi area. So you get first generation propagation, second generation, third generation, etc. Now, obviously, this is a slow process, this asexual propagation of these Qi Dan, uh, cultiv uh, Qi Dan varieties. And the quality of the tea obviously depends on the terroir, where it's grown, all of the, the aspects that, that are in all tea um, production. So the, the soil, you know, which side of the mountain it's on, etc., etc., etc. But common thinking is that true Da Hong Pao, in other words, the real stuff, needs to come from the Qi Dan variety. Okay. However, there isn't much Qi Dan variety from these mother bushes out there. And so everybody in Wu Yi, most of the producers, I would say, the, the estimates are that at least 80% of the Da Hong Pao that's being produced is actually not being produced purely from the Qi Dan varieties, but is being produced from faster growing and more easily accessible varieties like Shui Shen and Rogui. So Shui Shen and Rogui are kind of cheaper. They can be very good teas. I'm not saying they're not good teas, but um, strictly speaking, you shouldn't really call the tea a Da Hong Pao if it's not made from pure Qi Dan. So what's happening is that most of the producers are taking Shui Shen, Rou Gui, blending them. Maybe they're taking a little bit of Qi Dan if they can get some, and they're blending the tea to make a Da Hong Pao blend. So I would say that over 80% of the Da Hong Pao out there is a blended tea made with usually Shui Shen, Rou Gui, and if you're lucky, a little bit of Qi Dan. We have a pure Qi Dan Da Hong Pao that we call Empress Oolong. You're welcome to um, check it out. I'll put a card up here so you can follow that link. That is pure Qi Dan Da Hong Pao, but most Da Hong Pao is blended. Okay, so you can see a little bit of the background and you can see why a lot of the producers don't want to reveal this information because if you know this information, then you can quite honestly um, and directly say to them, is this Qi Dan variety? And then they would have to lie to your face. So it's much easier for them to say it's Da Hong Pao variety, which is kind of become just a name for a, a style of tea or a type of tea rather than a specific variety. Okay. The story gets a little bit more complicated though. In the 1950s, a group of scientists headed up by a scientist called Yao Yueming, they were commissioned to study the original Da Hong Pao mother bushes. So they took cuttings and they took them back to the laboratories to study them. Then the Cultural Revolution happened and all of these studies had to stop. But Yao Yueming continued in secret to study this uh, the cuttings from these mother bushes. And in the 1980s, he climbed Beidou Peak in the Wuyi mountain area, and he planted some tea bushes. And these two bushes have become known as Beidou from the name of the peak that he planted. They've grown and they've started to be propagated as well. So the question is, is Beidou a hybridization of Qi Dan? In other words, 
the original mother bushes are Chidan variety. He's taken cuttings of it and he's hybridized it. He's maybe uh, crossed it with another tea plant and created a different variety altogether called Beidou. Or is it possible that the original mother plants, because they were grown from seed, so they are going to be genetically um, different, whether or not Beidou is a direct lineage from one of the mother plants. And if so, then everyone moaning about the fact that the Wuyi producers are blending cultivars to make Da Hong Pao, perhaps, perhaps the original mother bushes or the original Da Hong Pao tea is originally a blend of different varieties. As I said, it's definitely that the, that the mother bushes are grown from seeds. So in essence, it is a blend. But how close is Beido to the original mother bushes? This is something that I'm still trying to find out. But in this guy one, I have Beido. So here you go. Take a look at this. This is Beido. We call it, fittingly, we call it lost robe for obvious reasons. So this is lost robe. It's just come in. It's a pure Beido and we are now gonna sample it. So I'm gonna go put the kettle on and I'll be right back to taste this tea. The kettle is just boiled, so let's taste this tea. Before we do that, quick scoping. Season is a spring 2016. I'm speaking to you from January 2017, so it's the perfect time to start to drink these charcoal roasted oolongs. The cultivar, as you know already, is Beido, so it's the Beido cultivar. The origin, this comes from Zhengyan, so the, the real heartland of Wuyi mountainous area. This is Zhengyan Wuyi in Fujian province. Picking and processing, it's picked up to the third or fourth leaf, so fairly large leaves, uh, withered, uh, allowed to oxidize, shaken and uh, heated, then rolled and then dried, and then afterwards it's roasted over charcoal. This is a medium roasted um, tea. This is not very heavy roasted, but it's also not light. So it's a medium roasted charcoal roasted tea. And finally, elevation, this comes from around 600 to 630 meters, um, which is classic kind of altitude for the Wuyi area. Okay, so quick look at the leaves again large twisted prune brown leaves and let's get tasting so boiling boiling water here 212 fahrenheit 100 degrees let's get some of these bubbles off pour this away and start to warm up our teaware a little bit And let's take a sniff of these leaves. It's actually been a good month since I've tasted this tea, since I selected it. I'm already getting a real fruitiness from it. Whoa, just without even lifting the lid. Okay, but when I smell the lid, I'm getting chocolate, nuts, hazelnuts, and then a real fruitiness like a... Um, Mm, an apple-y kind of fruitiness, but like a cooked apple fruitiness. And this is what you want from a Da Hong Pao. You know, uh, the thing that kind of I, I dislike about many of the Da Hong Pao's out there, the blended ones, especially ones that are very high in Shui Xian uh, cultivar, is that they, they, they have a very flat aroma. Um, it's not, they don't have as many of the kind of highly volatile uh, aromatics. It's quite flat. It's a little bit kind of um, cardboardy um, and usually quite uh, charcoal-y. They don't have the um, complexity and the dancing aromatics that a Chidan does or a Beido. Yeah. Mm, very, very nice. Okay, so just warm up everything a little bit. Right, let me check my water temperature here. 
96. I'm just going to give it a little blast, make sure that it's really, really hot. With these yen chars, you want really, really hot water. But the aroma coming off it is just what you want from a Da Hong Pao. For all of you who, who've gotten excited about tasting a Da Hong Pao and then it arrives and you've tasted it and you kind of wanted to like it, but it's just been a bit flat or it's dropped off after the first infusion, it's usually meaning it's very high in um, the uh, Shui Shen and Rogui varieties. Those varieties can be very good. Please don't get me wrong. They can be very good, but often this blending goes on with cheaper teas and then it's sold at a higher price and called Da Hong Pao. So we're at 100 degrees now. Let's uh, even give it a little hit of hot water. Make sure that we really keep this very, very hot. Oh yeah, that's hot. Okay. So let's pour this off and take a look at the color. This is where I burn myself. Nah, it's okay. This guy one is a good guy one. Okay, lid off. I'm just gonna have a little sniff of these leaves again because I can smell there's so much coming off it. There's a kind of cherry fruitiness as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> trying to put my finger on it. Um, a really bright fruitiness, um, almost like a sweet, uh, like a candied sweet kind of fruitiness to it, um, rather than a natural fruit. Cherry drops or something like that. Um, and then charcoal kind of fudginess to it as well. Okay, let's take a look at the color. Here you go. Take a look at the color there. So it's quite dark, kind of a bit orange in color, a bit of an orange um, tinge to it. Okay, tasting time. So, Lost Robe. Beidou, you could definitely, well, you can definitely say at least that this is the result of direct lineage from the mother bushes. That much you can certainly say. How much of it has been hybridized and changed by the scientists is still unknown, but it's definitely direct lineage from the mother bushes. Let's give it a taste. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, tea heads. texture is quite thick. I would say medium to thick. It's not got an immediate drying sensation that you do get with a lot of the very, very, um, again, the, the kind of flatter oolongs tend to express their mineralities quite early on, whereas this one will probably express it more in um, further infusions. What I'm getting is a beautifully rounded flavor. So, fudge, the charcoal is there, but you know how fudge can have that quite dark, fudgy, um, slightly, um, uh, um, slightly um, toasted taste to it. Nuttiness, hazelnuts, fudge. The charcoal is there, and this is what's great about this tea, is you have all of those rounded, deeper notes, but there's a real refreshing quality, like a, a cooked apple. I'm getting the cooked apple. Um, a woodiness, but a very light woodiness to it, like a kind of pine wood or like freshly sawn wood rather than some dark antique wood. I'm getting some of the, the um, um, what is that? Yeah, it's fudge, caramel. Um, I want to say, um, you know, when you open caramel that's wrapped in those um, brown paper wrappers, you know the smell of those brown paper wrappers? There's um, a kind of papery, 
but it's um yeah the smell of those craft is craft paper right craft paper wrappers caramel fudge um the cherry is not so much in the in the taste you get more of those bright zesty notes um, of those kind of stone fruits in the aroma instead i'm getting more of an apple kind of taste but uh, again a cooked stewed kind of apple taste mm. my mouth the finish is nice it's long it's holding the flavor the flavor continues to to um, persist even after i've swallowed now the minerality starting to show itself oh, in a really nice way it's giving me a kind of um, a drying sensation drying to juicy sensation the rocky taste is like um wet slate so it's not chalky um, it's certainly not very woody not kind of deep forest woody um, um, taste but it's more of um yeah like a clean slate kind of um uh, taste I, I know you're imagining that i go and lick slate all the time i don't but this is you know what i'm imagining slate you know the aroma of wet slate um to taste like but it's great now the the minerals are, are uh, even uh, after just you know even halfway through the first infusion the minerals are starting to lay down um their mark in my mouth and it's a, a a slight astringency it makes you want to drink more you know you get that that um rounded uh texture juicy and then it dries and gives you that slight astringency on the back of my tongue there's a little charcoal bitterness that just makes me want to refresh my mouth it makes me want to drink more let's hit it again these leaves are beautiful i love pulling these kinds of leaves they are beautiful they're 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 waxy and 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 oily and and um they open up really well especially with really really hot water make sure you brew this with hot water please 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 and i'm doing i guess what uh 10 15 second infusions you can take a look at the color again this strainer and this gong dave don't mix very well um, the strainers that come with the gong fu guru have an extra edge so it doesn't um doesn't fall in it's kind of annoying but it's okay let's look at the color again again this orange tinge to it it looks a bit darker in the camera than it actually is to my eye orange with a slight green note to it so kind of orange green um, it is dark but it's not as dark as it looks on my phone at least so i'm assuming you're seeing the same thing okay second effusion cheers tea heads yeah rounded just just the, um what you want with da hong pao blended or not pure or not what you want with a da hong pao is this um, rich tapestry of flavors you want the charcoal you want the fudgy chocolatey butterscotchy um, flavors but you want the high notes you want the minerality you want that dry um, minerality from rocks you want the high notes of a slight kind of stewed or cooked fruit and some woodiness and this beido whether or not it's you know played around with by uh, Yao Yueming the scientists you know from the early in the 70s and 80s or whether or not this is you know an original descendant um, or a, original um, version of one of the mother trees I don't know but it is a beautiful rendition of what I would consider a Da Hong Pao should taste like taste like and that's why we call it the lost robe
I'm gonna sit here and continue to drink this tea. I hope that this video has armed you with more knowledge so you can speak to your tea suppliers about Da Hong Pao and find the good stuff. If you know any more information about Da Hong Pao that I haven't spoken about, then please put it in the comments section below. But that's it, tea heads. If you made it to the end of this video, then please give the video the thumbs up, check out our YouTube playlist, and let us know if there are any videos that you would like us to make. If you're ever in London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions or comments, then please fire them over. Other than that, I'm Don May from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from the tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.